G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad and thanks for tuning in to another episode. Well, we're gonna walk through 10 helpful tips to improve your catch rates when fishing with soft plastics. We're gonna cover lots of ground from common mistakes that people make, minor tweaks to your setup and your technique that you're gonna find will make a really big difference. In between all that, I'm gonna catch a few fish myself. It's perfect conditions on the water, perfect time to walk you through some tips to help you with your soft plastics fishing. And let's get started right now. Now tip number one is to fish lighter. I don't know how many times I've been on the water with a group of people and as we come back in, we all start comparing rods and reels and lines and leaders to kind of see who did what and why. And I often put me catching more fish is because I'm prepared to fish a little bit lighter. And that means using lighter fluorocarbon leaders, lighter braid. Now I'm not suggesting that you take a knife to a gunfight, that would be silly. You don't want to be going targeting, you know, big snapper and kingfish using one to three kilo rods and six pound braid. It's more about understanding the species that you're targeting and maybe pushing the limits just a little bit on how light that you can go. It also makes the experience lots and lots of fun. So today I've got a two to four kilo rod, I've got a 2500 size reel, and I've got six pound braid and one rod length of six pound fluorocarbon leader. That's gonna be perfect for a lot of the fish that I'm going to catch here. That gear is more than capable. You can bag the drag off if, if you happen to land a big fish and just play it. But I find with me that really helps with casting distance. It really helps with casting accuracy. It really helps to feel all those nibbles and inquiries. And because you're using lighter fluorocarbon leaders and even sometimes lighter jig heads, you're gonna find it really does help increase those catch rates. Now our fishing manufacturers have gone to a lot of effort in recent years to make your fishing rods and reels lighter, but more importantly, to make your braid and your fluorocarbon leader stronger yet thinner in diameter. So if you're prepared to spend a little bit more on the line and leader, it allows you to really fish lighter. And in my case, I'm often really pushing those limits. If I'm targeting brim and things like that, I might fish as light as three or four pound. Today, I'm using six pound. And when I'm targeting some of those bigger fish, 10 or 15 pound, but being confident that that gear that you've got is very, very, very capable. So that's tip number one. Let's go catch a few fish. Oh, gotcha. Awesome on the little one or three kilo rod. Oh, it's a nice fish actually. Yeah, it's a nice fish. There we go. Okay, moving on to tip number two, which is to fish slower with your soft plastics. Now, obviously there are some species that like to hit lures and soft plastics on the top. Might be things like bass, snook or salmon. All right, so they're just in front of us here. So again, we should be able to cast. And with a bit of luck, let's count to five. Let's go one, two, three. All right, let's, we got to three. All right, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part locally, our fish species like to hold the bottom. And when I'm fishing in my waters here, whether it's salt water or fresh water, and I'm targeting things like pinkies and snapper, whiting, flathead, redfin, yellow belly, a lot of those species like to hold the bottom. And what I find is when guys are fishing, they're often casting and then taking that soft plastic away a little bit too fast, not giving the fish a really good opportunity to look at the plastic and then build up the confidence to take it. What a lot of the manufacturers have done is they've created the soft plastics that are buoyant. When you cast out, once your soft plastic sinks and is sitting on the bottom, that that soft plastic, the tail, is gonna stand upright in the water column. And even when you're not working that soft plastic, it's just gonna be fluttering in the water, and that's often when you'll get a lot of catches. For me, that's gonna be a case of casting, letting that soft plastic sink to the bottom, let it sit there for a good 10 seconds, oh. then do a little whoa, twitch, whoa, a little whoa, bit of wine to peel cool. in some slack line, and again, let it sit there for another 10 seconds. I find sometimes the slower you work it, the more catches that you get, especially if the fish are being finicky. Now, obviously, if you're fishing in really snaggy areas, you're gonna have to adjust your style and how you do that. It might be fishing with a lighter jig head or it might be working at back just a little bit faster.
<sighs> oh, here we go. There you go, there's your fish. And good fish. Yep. Yep. Alright, this one's dragging the ack. This is what we're here for. Oh, good. Really good size fish. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Tip number three is to fish with sense. And I find that this can make a really big difference, especially on those slow days. And generally what I'm doing is I'm smearing a little bit of scent into the tail of the soft plastic. Not too much because too much will have the opposite effect. And I think even when you're fishing, you can have too much of a good thing. So just a little bit of scent into the tail. Now these days, obviously you do have some manufacturers like Berkeley, Daiwa, Kitek, where they pre-scent a lot of those soft plastics. What you're gonna find after you've used those ones for maybe 20 or 30 casts, it may be worth then applying your own scent. Now for the other soft plastics, and obviously for those ones, once the scent is worn out, I'm generally using things like S-Factor or Procure. There's lots of different scents on the market, but they do work really well. I'll typically reapply it maybe every five or 10 casts. If the bite is absolutely frantic, especially when you are scenting, then you might do it a little bit more frequently. But again, every five or 10 casts, apply a little bit of scent to the tail and you're gonna find that is definitely gonna help with your catch rate. Tip rates. number four is to fish with the right gear. Now, did you know that there are technique specific fishing rods that are made to really hone in on the type of fishing that you're doing? You've got moderate action rods with whippy tips, which are perfect for your treble and your bib based lures. You've got fiberglass rods with really whippy rod tips that are perfect for bait fishing. And then you've got graphite or carbon fiber fast action spin rods, which are designed specifically for soft plastics fishing. Fast action, which means that they're very, very stiff and very, very responsive. But what happens is they're very lightweight. So it means it's gonna give you a really good casting control, really good casting distance, because it is a fast action stiff rod. And because you're using single hooks, as soon as you lift to set that rod, it's gonna set the hook really, really quickly. Subtle differences that make a big, big difference to catch rates. The blank is designed in a way that you're gonna feel all the nibbles through the rod tip. And then when you getting those nibbles to be able to strike and set that hook. So make sure you've got the right tools for the right job. And in this case, when you're fishing with soft plastics, it's a graphite or a carbon fiber rod, generally around that seven foot in length, nice and light, but very, very stiff, fast action. You put all those things together and then you'll be using the right gear that will help increase your catch rate. Sam, are you good? There we go. Take it. Take it. Oh, take it. Take it. There we go. Got him. Got him. Got him. Good fish. Oh, this is a big one. This is a good one. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's another one. Okay, so tip number five is to rig your soft plastic on straight. It sounds obvious, but I see this flaw time and time again. Take your time, rig it on correctly. If you don't do it properly, take it off and redo it again. I've been fishing with soft plastics for so many years, I don't get it right every single time. And when I don't, I take it off and I redo it again. The main reason is if you don't rig it on correctly, it really does impact the swimming action. Now, obviously your product testers and your fishing manufacturers, they spend a lot of time to get natural action into that soft plastic. Whether it's a worm imitation, a paddle tail or a curl tail, whatever it might be, the action is built into that soft plastic. So it's really important that you rig it correctly and straight so you can get optimal swimming action out of that soft plastic and as I said don't stress if you don't do it properly take it off and do it again okay so we move on to tip number six and this is more aligned for guys that have boats kayaks or even jet skis and that is to really learn how to use your sounder or your fish finder because knowing how to use your marine electronics will make a massive difference to catch rates when you're out on the water that ability to find fish then to stay on top of them and mark waypoints and set drift lines and have different modes so that way you know what you're looking at know how and when to use traditional scan 
down scan and side scan, taking advantage of what each one does in different scenarios, then setting up split screens, marking waypoints whenever you mark up fish or whenever you catch fish, setting trails and routes, all those sort of things are there to help you on the water to locate fish and stay on top of them. That way you will have a productive day's fishing. The marine electronics also help you identify really basic things such as your water depth, your water temperature, whether you're fishing on reef or a sandy bottom or if you're fishing on top of rocky areas. Lots and lots of insight to really help you identify where the fish are going to be. We do a lot of stuff in the Fishing Mad members area. We've got a place called Sounder School where we cover lots of that. So if you want to know more about that, then have a look at our members area. But if you want to improve your soft plastics fishing, definitely know how to use your sounder. Okay, so that moves us on to tip number seven, and I reckon this is one of the most important, and tip number seven is to experiment. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Your experience and your growth as a soft plastics angler really comes from that ability to try different things and to see what works in different situations. Use soft plastics of different sizes and different profiles and different colors. Run through your curl tails and your critters and your imitations and your grubs and your paddle tails. There is so much variety out there and it's really important that you don't get stuck doing the same thing over and over again. By experimenting, you start to work out what works better in different situations. Are there certain colors that work better on a certain day? Are there certain profile sizes that work better for different species? All these sort of things that you start to do really just helps you build up your own little database of what works and why. And I find that every time I go out fishing, I've generally got probably about 10 different packets of soft plastics and there'll be a whole different variety of colors and sizes. Now as anglers, we all have our comfortable soft plastics. So these are things that you've caught fish on and what happens is you get in the habit of using them time and time again. For me, they might be things like your four inch turtleback worms, your two and a half inch grubs, your four inch paddle tails. And it's really important to build up those confident soft plastics, things that you probably feel warm and fuzzy about tying on as you go out in the water. But it's also important not to fall into the trap of just using them and nothing else because you're gonna find that your experience and your knowledge is not gonna grow if you don't start using different things. It's also a really fun thing to go out to your tackle store, buy different things in different colors and shapes and sizes, and then get on the water and experiment with what works. That's a huge part of that soft plastics fishing journey that is a lot of fun. So get out there, get experimenting, and you're gonna find it's really gonna help with your catch rates over time. So this feels like a decent fish. So this was on that Kitec Easy Shiner. And this has got a little bit of weight to it. So, oh, this is a nice fish. It's huge. Oh, I don't want to lose it. That's a big, big, big flatty, mate. Oh, it's <laughs> Tip number eight is all about jig head selection. Now these days, there are lots and lots of different types of jig heads. They come in different sizes, they come in different weights, you've got hidden weight systems, you've got weedless ones. So it can be a little bit confusing when you're new to this. It is really important to match the correct jig head with the type of soft plastic that you're using, that it's gonna get your soft plastic into the right space, that it is matches the profile size of the soft plastic, that way you've got really good hook exposure, that way the hook comes out at a right point of the soft plastic. So this is something 
that you just learn with experience, you develop that skill set pretty quickly. A lot of the fish species that I'm targeting locally tend to hold and school up towards the bottom. So for me, it's really important to pick a jig head, one that's just not gonna sink and plummet to the bottom straight away, and one that's heavy enough that will just slowly get to the bottom because we want to really maximize the tail action or the built-in swimming action of that soft plastic. So where I'm fishing today, for instance, I'm fishing in four meters deep. There is next to no current. It's a very, very calm and still day. So I'm using a 1 12th or a 1 8th of an ounce jig head. And what I've got is a 2 slash O gauge jig head size. Ask your tackle shop operators and I'm sure they'll be really happy to help you with your choices to make sure that you're buying the right things. You'll also find that now some of the soft plastics manufacturers, and I think like things of the dollar bait junkies, is they actually have pictures that show you this particular soft plastic, we recommend using this size jig head, and that can be really helpful. I'll give you some examples of some of the stuff that I use. So if I'm out in your estuaries, your shallow flats targeting things like brim, I might be using something like a 1 20th HWS jig head in a 1 slash O. Where I am today, as I said again, we're fishing in four meters deep. I have got a 1 12th or a 1 8th a two slash O or three slash O. I might be out in much deeper water targeting things like your snapper. And in that case, I might be fishing anywhere from one quarter of an ounce. I might be fishing with something like a four slash O. And then obviously as you move up the stack using bigger soft plastics, it might be things like your five inch, your seven inch or your nine inch jerk sheds or curl tails. The, the idea is as you get bigger up the stack is a five inch soft plastic should be ma matched with a five OG head. A seven inch plastic should be matched with a seven OG head and so on. That's some of the logic. It doesn't always work, but that's some of the basic science. Okay, tip number nine is to use a fluorocarbon leader. And for me, I always use one rod length of fluorocarbon leader when I'm fishing with soft plastics. Now there is a lot of debate to whether this actually works or not. And you can make your mind on whether you think it's that important. For me, it has four advantages and that's the reason why I use it time and time again. Let's go through those four advantages. So advantage number one is, so it's basically fused fishing line, okay? And by fused, what we mean is the manufacturers have made it thinner in diameter. So it's harder for fish to see. Is The presentation of your soft plastic is gonna look a little bit more natural because that line that's attached to it is going to be more invisible. The other key thing is that fluorocarbon is abrasion resistant and braid isn't. So if you're fishing in anywhere with reef or structure and your line brushes up against any stuff, you're gonna find that the fibers in the braid do break apart really easily. That's not the case with your fluorocarbon leader. It's quite abrasion resistant, it's quite tough. You could be fishing up against pylons, you could be fishing on top of reef and you're gonna find that that line is much, much stronger and more durable than braids. Another reason is as you tie on your soft plastic to a jig head, and then you tie your line to it, you'll find that braid has a tendency to slip off the jig head where your fluorocarbon leader will lock into place really, really nicely. And finally, your fluorocarbon leader has stretch. Your braid has none. So this is really, really important. So when you catch a good fish, obviously your reel has got a drag on it that allows the fish to run. But what you're gonna find if there's no stretch and no give in that line is you really put a lot of stress on your knots and that's when your line can break. So by having that rod length, of fluorocarbon leader, it just gives you a little bit of that stretch that the braid doesn't. So there, four really key reasons from tying on, invisibility, giving your abrasion resistance and some stretch that I think really do make a big difference with catch rates. And finally, this brings us to our final tip, tip number 10, which is don't give up, stay positive and stay committed. Do all those things that we've said previously about experimenting and using the right gear and taking advantage of your tools and the results will absolutely come. There's something really, really awesome about building up your confidence to the level of where you're out fishing with one rod and one reel, a range of soft plastics in different sizes and colors, a range of jig heads in different weights and hook gauges, and to go out there and to be really confident that you can catch fish, not only catch fish, but outfish a lot of the people that you're fishing with. And it's really, really cool. You don't have to carry bait, you don't have to carry ice, you're not gonna have smelly fingers. 
that pure convenience, you can just pick up a rod and reel and go and fish. But you have to stick to it. You're gonna have your ups and downs, but once you start to get confidence, you're gonna find you're gonna really enjoy it. So have fun with it and take lots of joy in when you put all of that together and you start catching fish consistently on soft plastics. Don't give up, stay positive. It's an addictive form of fishing. It's my favorite form of fishing that you can really have some great times out on the water. Anyway, guys, that concludes our video. That is 10 fishing tips to improve your catch rates with soft plastics. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider becoming a Fishing Mad member. We have got lots and lots of goodies, lots of extra stuff to really help you with your journey from soft plastic fishing. We've got rigging guides, we've got workshops, we've got podcasts, we've got competitions, we've got giveaways, we've got maps, We've got fishing reports and marks. There's a whole heap of stuff in there really to help take your fishing to the next level. It's a great way of also being involved in a really fun community and sharing those fun fishing experiences. You can find out more by going to www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member. Really hope that you've enjoyed this video and good luck out there with your soft plastics fishing.